Thank you, Vivek. Thank you, Alisa, for inviting me to discuss and share my experience with this inventive device. Basically, we already know about aerosols, which are contagious. We know that we do perform some aerosol generating procedures when patient comes to the hospital. And we are also aware about indoor pollution and its role in respiratory contagious diseases. There's about 41% chances of cross infection as per one Chinese study during COVID-19 pandemic. And our healthcare workers are exposed to the risk they do suffer from morbidity and mortality. There are about 1.5 million healthcare workers in UK and about 2.2 million in India. A few days back, 96 deaths were reported amongst healthcare workers in UK. So let us discuss about the positive pressure rooms and its setup. So here you can see in this slide, um, there's the central operation table over there, which is brown in color, and then red color denotes for the position of the staff, surgeons, and anesthetists. And then you can see a few more objects in, inside the theatres. The laminar flow on top there, through which air comes in the theatre, and then you can see ducts all around, which vents the air outside operation theatre rooms. Positive pressure rooms means the pressure in theatres is positive, and then, then it goes through the ducts, and in the process it also leaks through the doors, vent, and scrub room etc. So in the next slide here in the picture above you can see that the air is flowing. The blue is clean air and when it is colorful it's like some contaminants are there. You can see in the center flow is coming from the top and then going through the vent ducts and near the ducts is slightly curved. In slide or picture down there you can see in the center of the table in the center of the room you can see that color and some more colors like a yellow, green, and red. And then that is the concentration of the contaminants. And on right side of the screen, you can see that if ducts are blocked, this contaminant stays inside the theater and um, uh, is not able to leak out. But on the left side of the screen, you can see the all blue air over there, which means that contaminant uh, is removing through the vent and ducts and maybe getting into the corridors or nearby area like recovery um, through uh, the vents and then it is disappearing. And also you can notice here that contaminants are normally uh, settled down towards the base and that's why one should think about um, some uh, problem with the shoes and footwear. In this slide you can see the distribution of virus laden aerosols in various sites in the theater or ICU. Site one is near air outlet and site two is near patients and site three is around doctor's office. When they calculated the aerosol concentration, they found that at site one, which is near air outlet, the aerosol concentration is about 37.5%. While at site two, we are near the patient, it is about 44.4%. And at site three, which is around doctor's office, the aerosol concentration was 12.5%. The study is from China in 2020. And then this means that the aerosols, which are airborne contagious material, they can leak out of the, from near, from near the, from the site of the patient to adjacent areas. And then that is very important to note down. And that is the reason why one should have negative pressure rooms. And negative pressure rooms means the pressure inside the room is slightly negative than adjacent areas, corridors or recovery area, so that air can drawn inside the room rather than leaking out. And they've done studies, and then they have found that when air changes faster, the efficiency of negative pressure room increases in removing the aerosol contaminants. They found that when air, air changes are about 12 per hour, then the air gets clean in 35 minutes with an efficiency of 99.9%. And when these air changes are 50 per hour, then 99.9% .9 efficiency is achieved in eight minutes. Normally, negative pressure rooms, they work at an air change rate of 12 per hour. 
Normally, we have positive pressure rooms or operation theatres or ICUs in most of our hospitals. And then, therefore, converting them into negative pressure rooms is a big challenge and a huge cost as well. And then this was the need that what we can do in such a situation, how to create a negative pressure rooms and can we observe some preventive measures so that we can prevent the leak of aerosols into hospital premises because indoor pollution is important. So I got this idea about half past 10 one night in night time and I couldn't sleep till about 2 a.m. And then next day I was home and my wife was going to hospital and as usual she was giving me instructions about washing, cleaning, cooking and more instructions and instructions. The minute she disappeared I went to my garage, picked up a bucket and went to see my friend and then asked him to cut the bucket into a particular shape so that I can have a proof of concept and that is very important because I wanted to make sure that whatever concept or idea I've got in my mind is feasible. And then I started working on can we remove the aerosols without contaminating the room by enclosing the aerosol generating area basically. Can we reduce the size of the negative pressure room? So otherwise the whole operation theater is negative pressure but then we are trying to apply this negative pressure inside this device, bucket shipped device, where we can apply suction catheters and we can create a kind of a negative pressure. And then third question, major question was, can we increase the air, cha rate, air change rate to enhance the efficiency? So after performing this quick feasibility test, I contacted my colleague who works in Fort Fort Escorts Hospital. He's director and head of the department of anesthesia, Dr. Rajiv Lochan Tiwari. And then he also made the prototype based on my advice and we discussed about it and then we inserted two suction tubes onto the near the top of the bucket shaped device. Basically, we were utilizing the principles of physics. We knew that negative pressure isolation rooms, they work on 12 air changes uh, per hour. And then we also know that we have got central suction system installed in our operation theaters and ICU and ward areas. And then, then each suction outlet suck out about 40 liters of air per minute. And then if we can apply two suction tubes into this device, then probably they will draw or suck 60 to 80 liters of air per minute. And if device capacity is about 30 liters, then probably we will achieve air changes in 29 seconds. And that means that in one hour, we'll be doing 120 air changes, hence enhancing the efficiency tremendously. So Vivek wanted me to share my experience of this inventive device that how we developed with you guys to encourage you to do inventions. And then my 14 years of experience with innovations in IP and especially interest in IP helped me a lot at every step. I took everything, I went through a process. So initially I got a creative idea or concept which was basically meant to sol solve a healthcare challenge. And when I was creating it, I was concerned about not only about the health aspect of it, but about the cost implications to the healthcare industry as well. Basically, technological advancement should be cost effective. In fact, they should reduce the healthcare cost. And then we made prototype very quickly. And then simultaneously, we were doing literature search to know more and more about physics and principles, positive pressure theaters, negative pressure theaters, and then hence we could develop a proof of concept prototype. Initially we applied, we observed one feasibility test to see whether this concept can be implemented and then we performed few feasibility tests through collaborations, through my friend in Fortis who performed about four or five adult patients. Um, that he gave an aesthetics using the prototype device and at least one patient was just two weeks old and then every time it was very, very convenient and successful because we wanted to design this uh, hood-like structure in order to provide, um, to facilitate the air change, faster air change rate, and to provide all comfort to the operator. 
We made it transparent as well to make it user friendly. At the same time, it is very important to take care of intellectual property. So therefore, we applied for design protections in UK and in India. And also we, we applied for patent protection application. And that means that when approved, our IP is protected from the date of application. We took care of regular approvals as well. So we contacted medical physics and made our device as per their recommendations. They recommended us to make device using medical grade material, polycarbonate or acrylic, and to make it transparent. We followed that advice. We also contacted MHRA in UK. It is a regulatory agency. And MHRA advised that this device is not a medical device because it is not an implant or it's not a kind of a treatment. They also observed that this device is not PPE as well because it is protecting healthcare workers, but then it is not worn by the healthcare workers. My research and innovation department contacted national resolution and sorted out indemnity issue. As inventor, we should remember that collaborations and manufacturing are very important aspect. Your team should be very, very strong and collaborations, they make your team strong. So we, 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 we should make efforts to get collaboration with very good parties. In next slide, you can see our device design in UK. You can see that this is a hood-like transparent device made of medical grade material and it has got two ends, head end, which is wider and neck end, which is uh, slightly smaller than the head end. And both ends are covered with a clear draping. It is not enclosed area. And this facilitates the air change rate. Because if we enclose it with a solid partition, then air change rate will get affected. And also the larger opening provides very good access to the operator. Operator is obviously in PPE, but then his hands are not stuck through the holes there, which is like handcuffed hands. Anesthetists should have freedom to move their hands because they should be ready to tackle all sorts of emergency. We do perform critical care procedures. On the neck end side, uh, ODP or anesthetic technician can apply Celix maneuver or cricoid pressure or can pass on the boozy and things like that. So both and open is very, very important. On left hand side, you can see the prototype being used by the anesthetist who is in PPE. In next slide, you can see the design which we are developing in India with the help of Indian Institute of Public Health. Again, collaboration, which is very, very important. And then the device is about to be ready in a couple of days. So that's the journey of any invention. So because I was working in innovations and IP for 14 years, so I could see all processes. I could make sure that I'm following every step properly because they are very, very important to get regulatory approvals or take the device into the real life. Thank you very much.